We really appreciate you coming to our very first um, Tech Educators Conference. In order to achieve the full benefit of ICT in higher education and training, there is need to increase investment in ICT infrastructure and integrate ICT in all aspects of education and training. We train on average around 500,000 people graduate from universities and, and colleges, I believe it's even more. But how many of those are able to transit smoothly, acquire the jobs or into entrepreneurship and succeed? What are some of the things you have seen as some of the challenges that these young people are faced with on your platform or um, trying to connect them with uh, opportunities through the employers as well? A lot of employers, rightfully so to be honest, to a great extent, really just want ready talent. Um, they have businesses to run, they have investors to, to, to report back to. They want you to be ready. Sometimes the best talent is not always a good fit for the team. You know, I want someone who is a problem solver. I want someone who's inclusive, so I want someone who is willing to learn and say I was wrong. There's nothing like a young person who's curious and wants to prove themselves. They are far much better than someone who with 25 years who thinks, I know everything, you can't tell me anything. If you bring in someone within your organization and invest in them the best, and maybe the lifetime value is three years, they can either grow within the organization or even out of the organization. And I think employers out there should be able to make that decision that I'm not here to train you and keep you, but actually train you to give me the best productivity within the period that you're here, then you can either grow within the organization or out of the organization. I just wish we could have more employers willing and ready and incentivized to tech in tech talent that they don't necessarily think are ready. The reason why the millennials has a such a peculiar study and a peculiar interest is because they come with a dash of interest and restlessness. For the millennial in the workplace, work is life. Work and life, they try to intertwine them. They don't say, I have a personality for work and I have a personality when I'm at home. So if I can work at home, if I can work remotely at a cafeteria, if I can work in traffic, that's fine by me issues that students are facing within higher education institutions is that the kind of assessment that they are going through is not preparing them for what real world problems can act, may, may actually look like. Regardless of how difficult your curriculum is, how much are you essentially pushing your students to use their own knowledge or their own creativity to solve a problem or to engage with, uh, to engage with curriculum? For us, um, every few weeks, um, students have to go through a certain kind of projects where essentially they need to use technologies that we have not taught them. So by the time they're getting to the end of their curriculum, we are saying, you've been taught XYZ languages, you now need to go and find 1, 2, 3 and ABC in order to connect with what you've already learned. Normally, passion plays a role in this. And that's where you'll find somebody graduating even in a history degree, but joins the tech world and uh, is able to do better. Personal effort and passion and interest whether you are in a university or in a technical institution, will make you competent in solving a problem. The question should not be whether people should, should take short technical courses or go to university. The question should be, should universities restructure or improve how they train their students? That should be the question. Because traditional methods of teaching and training are not working in the world that is so dynamic and things are changing at the moment. So I think we need to think of it like not competition between universities and uh, technical providing institution, but how can the two complement each other to produce individuals who are able to address societal problems in a way that can produce profits and in a way that can improve the lives of people who live in that society. In order to build any ecosystem, and in this ecosystem, we'll talk about the major players being the employers, the trainers, and the students. There needs to be essentially confidence from employers that talent exists in the market. There needs to be confidence from students that opportunities are out there. And there needs to be confidence from the training institutions that there are people who are willing to learn enough to then move into, the, into to take those opportunities. The thing that we actually need to be focusing on is behavior changes. Because regardless of whether you're in a six-month institution or a four-year university, 
we are doing students a disservice if we build dependencies on teachers and curriculum, which in traditional methods is a lot of what we do. Essentially, we teach students that you need to be dependent on a given curriculum or a given facilitator in order to continue to develop. So that once they leave that institution, maybe they are not too ready to continue to tackle challenges that, that come towards them. In our panel, we talked a little bit about um, what are some of the requirements for uh, junior uh, entry-level tech talent. Um, and most of the biggest thing that actually came out was around the fact that um, a lot of people actually need um, these life skills, these soft skills, uh, these skills that would actually propel you um, to the next stage of your career. It's not just tech and, and uh, and the ability to innovate, and not just education and that ecosystem, but I would add a third, a third arm, which would be the creation of businesses that are innovating, um, and the growth of those businesses that have the ability to innovate. And if the three of them can function well, I think we've got a great basis for, for accelerating economic growth and creating jobs for not just the millennials, but for everybody. The institutions in Kenya should really work to read or get inspiration from the market what are employers saying? Because institutions churn out graduates with the end goal in mind that they get jobs, that they create jobs. But if what is being used to churn out these graduates is not relevant to what the current market is, there's always going to be a disconnect. So it's always up to the institutions and the stakeholders to find out where is the market, where are the trends going, and then work now backwards to create um, courses that fit and that serve the current situation on the ground.